There are many misconceptions about what a concussion really is, like you need to hit your head to sustain a concussion, or you need to lose consciousness. Well, while you're certainly more likely to be concussed if you hit your head, and loss of consciousness is typically a pretty good indicator of concussion, this is just not true. You do not need to hit your head or lose consciousness to sustain a concussion. You see, concussions don't occur because you hit your head. Concussions occur when your brain bounces around the inside of your skull. When the brain comes in contact with the inside of the skull, the areas that come in contact with the skull might be damaged. But even more importantly, it can cause stretching and tearing of your brain cells, typically in and around your brainstem. So any type of impact that causes quick enough acceleration or deceleration, like a whiplash incident, can be enough to cause a concussion, whether or not you hit your head. Now, because any part of your brain can contact the inside of your skull, you can experience virtually any symptom as a result of a head injury. But there are a few common symptoms that most concussion sufferers may experience. Headache, dizziness, nausea, neck pain or tension, fogginess, and visual disturbances like light sensitivity or blurred vision. There's a reason why these symptoms are so common, but first, we need to learn a little neuroanatomy. Here's your brain. This is your cerebrum. It's largely what makes you human. It allows you to think logically, make judgments, control your actions, be creative, put meaning behind your experiences, and a lot more. This is your brainstem. It deals with all of your body's automatic processes that you don't really have to think about. Things like regulating your vital signs, orienting you to your surroundings, controlling your digestion, controlling sensation to your head and face, allowing for taste, moving your eyes, moving your face, moving some of your neck and shoulder muscles, controlling your instinctive ability to respond quickly to dangerous things that you see or hear, and more. This is your cerebellum. Some of its main functions include setting the tone of your back muscles to give you proper posture and helping out with your balance and coordination. It also helps regulate your vital signs and it works very closely with your brainstem to accomplish all of this. When the brain is bouncing around inside your skull, only areas of your cerebrum that come in direct contact with your skull will typically be at risk of injury. But any way your brain bounces around, there will virtually always be a stretching and tearing of brain cells in and around the brainstem. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. The punching bag is your cerebrum. The spring is your brainstem. My fist and the table are both sides of your skull. Notice there's an immediate deformation of the punching bag where it contacts my fist and the table. These are typically the only areas where your cerebrum might be damaged. Now, watch how much bend and flex there is in the spring. No matter what direction the bag moves, there is always a shearing force being exerted on the spring. This stretching and bending is essentially what happens to your brainstem when you sustain a concussion, and it leads to physical tears in those brainstem cells. Now, what does that have to do with the common symptoms of concussion? Well, these are all the symptoms that commonly arise when the brainstem is injured. The upper brainstem controls pain in your head and face as well as your sensitivity to light, so injury to these areas might bring on headaches and light sensitivity. Your lower brainstem controls digestion and some neck and shoulder muscles, so injury to these areas might make you nauseous or give you tight and painful neck muscles. Many areas along the brainstem coordinate your eye movements and orient you to space. When those areas are injured, you might experience blurred vision or feel dizzy or nauseous. The resources your brain now requires to carry on these typically easy functions can steal resources away from the rest of your brain, making you foggy, moody, or just not like yourself. Direct damage to the cerebrum might cause these symptoms too. I know this seems terrifying, but the good news is that most people will heal, symptomatically at least, within a couple months. And many of those that don't heal on their own will largely recover with the right types of rehab in the right amount of time. Whether your injury is recent or you've been living with symptoms for years, there is hope for you. It's never too late or too early to seek help. Search for concussion rehab specialists near you. Learn from these videos. And if you need more guidance, please don't hesitate to schedule a consult with me. If you learned something from this video, please give it a like. If you want to learn more, please subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. This is Dr. P, and I'll see you in the next video.